Well, good morning, everyone. Welcome to Grace Gathering Online. My name is Zeg Zeno, and I'm so excited to see all of you here virtually today. Uh, so glad that you guys are able to, to join us, uh, that we're able to worship together uh, through this use of technology. Uh, before we jump into our service today, I have a few quick announcements for you. Uh, first things first is that uh, fall groups are starting. Uh, so we have some groups going on at each of our different sites. Uh, and these are great ways for you to get in community, to uh, grow in your relationship with God, get to know new people, uh, things like that. So we want to encourage you, get signed up for some of the groups that we have. Uh, you can go to gracegathering.com backslash community to find out more information about uh, the different groups that are available and, and what those look like. Uh, along with that, we also have a new update to our website. Uh, this is going to be our Grace Gathering portal. So a lot of you who are members uh, have been wanting to try to find information online. Sometimes it's a little bit hard to figure out where to go on our website. So we've created a space on our website uh, that will specifically give you all the information that you need. Um, so if you check out gracegathering.com backslash portal, uh, you'll be able to find some quick links to weekly updates and, and news and, and all sorts of things like that. Uh, that's more friendly for our members who have been here for a while and, and just need to know that quick information. So uh, check that out, gracegathering.com backslash portal. Uh, other than that, that's all the announcements we have. So let's go ahead and enter into a time of worship together. Good morning, Grace Gathering. Thank you for joining us today. And wherever you are, let's worship together this morning.
consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness, and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. Therefore God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father.
wonderful, it is beautiful, it is powerful. We lift up all praises to you this morning, God. That you would receive all the glory. Well, good morning. My name is Chris Norman, and it's great to be with you online. Uh, last week, we started a new series called Multiply. We said many times during our message uh, last week that healthy things grow and multiply. And when we look at the life of Jesus and the life of the early church, and as we look at our church, we want to see that same pattern of healthy things growing and multiplying. As many of you know, we're planning to multiply our leadership both at the north site and at the east site. Next week, Levi and Allison Francois will become the lead couple of Grace Gathering East. And Brian and Shandy Menzi, the following week on October 3rd, will become the lead couple of Grace Gathering North. We are super excited uh, about both of these couples taking on these leadership areas. As Scott Jester and I hand off those roles to Brian and Levi, we'll continue filling key roles at Grace as we help lead Grace Gathering as a whole into the future. Uh, this morning, we're gonna, I'm going to give a, a few thoughts here um, about a, a specific uh, verse and, and a passage. And then we're gonna hear from all three of our site leaders about what multiplication looks like at all of our site congregations. Um, but before we do that, I wanna just give you a little more background on how important discipleship multiplication is in the church. So I wanna call your attention to an absolutely amazing verse and passage of scripture probably the best, one of the best at least, verses on the issue of leadership and discipleship multiplication. It's found in 2 Timothy chapter 2, and we'll read it verses 1 and 2. And it says this, You then, my son, this is the Apostle Paul speaking to Timothy, You then, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus, and the things that you've heard me say in the presence of many witnesses in trust to reliable people who will also be qualified to teach others. So this passage is the Apostle Paul speaking to Timothy. Timothy is a younger leader and Paul is the seasoned leader. He's been discipling Timothy for a number of years. And now Timothy is actually helping lead the church in Ephesus, which is one of the most influential churches of the day. And here he's reminding Timothy of the ways in which he's discipled Timothy and the commitment that he wants Timothy to have to multiply that discipleship in his own leadership. And the reason verse 2 is such a fascinating verse on the importance of multipliable discipleship is because in this one verse we have four different generations of discipleship taking place. Let's actually look at it more closely. Verse two, we'll see all four generations. So Paul, that's one generation, is the one speaking. He's speaking to Timothy. There's generation number two. The things you've heard me say in the presence of many witnesses and trust to reliable people, Timothy. There's generation three, the reliable people who will then also be qualified to teach others themselves, there's the fourth generation. So four tiers, the Apostle Paul, to Timothy, to reliable people, to those those reliable people will teach and train and disciple as well. Four generations of disciples in one verse. Now let me give you a little more background into this relationship between Paul and Timothy that will give even greater insight into this discipleship multiplication. So Paul met Timothy when Timothy was about 15, 16 years old. Timothy is from a town called Lystra. Paul and his missionary team go into this town called Lystra. 
someone gets physically healed while they're there preaching the gospel and praying for healing. It causes a big conflict with some leaders in the city. They end up trying to stone Paul, and they do, do that. And actually, many think that he's stoned to death. They drag him out of the city, and he's still alive. But they leave the city after that big confrontation. Now, Timothy is actually witnessing all of what's going on in this small town. And at some point, we don't know when, Timothy comes to faith in Jesus and he begins to grow in his spiritual influence in that city and town. Now, we know from other passages that his mother was Jewish and his father was Greek. We know his dad didn't have much influence, spiritual influence on him, but his mother and his grandmother trained him at an early age in the Bible. We we see this in 2 Timothy 1.5, which Paul says this to Timothy, I'm reminded of your sincere faith, which first lived in your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice, and I'm persuaded now lives in you also. And so anyway, Paul and his team eventually leave the city of Lystra and then he comes back to the city, Paul does, with his team about four years later. During those four years, Timothy's influence has grown so much in the community that when Paul comes back a second time, everyone's telling Paul that this teenager named Timothy is on fire for God. He's having massive amounts of influence And so Paul ends up, during the second visit to the city, ends up inviting Timothy to be on his missionary team with him around the age of 18 to 20. In fact, we read this in Acts 16, verses 1 through 3, when Paul comes back a second time to Lystra. So Paul came to Derbe and then to Lystra, where a disciple named Timothy lived, whose mother was Jewish and a believer, but whose father was a Greek. The believers at Lystra and Iconium spoke well of him. Timothy was gaining this amazing reputation. Paul wanted to take him along on the journey, gave an invitation for Timothy to be on his team. So he circumcised them because of the Jews who lived in that area, for they all knew that his father was a Greek. And so Timothy comes onto Paul's team as a very young man and receives world-class training by one of the best missionaries and Christian leaders in the history of the church, the Apostle Paul. And by the time Timothy is in his mid-30s, he finds himself helping lead the most influential church of the day, the church of Ephesus. And knowing Timothy is in a massive leadership role at this influential church that's That's a resourcing movement. Paul writes two letters to Timothy to give him further instructions as he continues to disciple Timothy, now from a little bit more of a distance. And because Timothy is still fairly young in this role age-wise, he says this to Timothy in chapter 4, verse 12 of 1 Timothy. He says to Timothy, don't let anyone look down on you because you're young. But set an example for the believers in speech, in conduct, in love, in faith, and in purity. Timothy then helped lead that church in Ephesus for many years, according to church historians, before he was eventually martyred for his faith and his opposition of worshiping the goddess Diana in Ephesus. So let me just go back to that first verse that we read at the beginning. 2 Timothy 2, verses 1 and 2. Paul says to Timothy, You then, my son, be strong in the grace that's in Christ Jesus. And the things you've heard me say to you in the presence of many other people, I want you then to entrust to reliable people who will also be qualified to train and to teach others. And this multiplication will just continue. Now, when Paul says this to Timothy, he had been discipling him for 15 years. Remember, Timothy was about 18 to 20 when he came on Paul's team. Now Timothy's in his mid-30s, about 15 years. And he's reminding him of the investment he made in him and that he wants Timothy to continue to pursue this multipliable investment. This is how 
you pay it forward. I want you just to think for a few moments, who's discipled you? Who are you discipling? How are you paying it forward from those who've discipled you? How are we multiplying disciples? How are we multiplying groups of people who are discipling, maybe small groups or missional communities? How are we multiplying even congregations? Healthy things multiply. And we're seeing healthy things multiply at all three of our site congregations. And so we're going to now hear uh, how some of this is happening uh, from our east site from Levi, from our central site from Steve, and then from our north site from Brian. Let's listen to these amazing stories and ways God's moving. Well, thank you, Chris. Uh, my name is Levi Francois, and uh, I lead here at our east site. Um, and so I just want to say welcome to, to everyone. And, and yeah, I want to go into um, just some of the ways that we've seen multipl multiplication take place here at the East. Um, and just three categories uh, that I just want to highlight today. We've certainly seen God move in, in just wondrous ways here at the East. And, um, and three specific uh, ways that, um, or three specific lenses by which we've seen uh, multiplication take place is with our formal ministries. We've seen it with individuals in the way that they reach out to one another, uh, as well as within our groups and communities. And so I want to start by just talking about how we've seen multiplication with um, our formal ministry. And, and I'm going to talk about our high school and middle school ministry, Momentum and Shift, respectively. And so today, Momentum and Shift is led by, Momentum is led by Adam Smith and Audrey Murray, while Shift is led by Trevor Craner and his wife, Emily Craner. And certainly this, uh, this was not always the case. Um, about six or seven years ago, the leaders of Momentum um, was uh, Kyle Zimmerman and his team. And uh, my wife, Allison, and I, we led the middle school ministry shift. And the cool thing is, during that time, so around 2014, 2015, um, all four of the current youth ministry leaders were all students uh, at Momentum, and many of them were also volunteering as leaders for us at Shift. And so that, just even thinking about um, just God's providence there, it, it's, it's really amazing uh, just to see our young people coming through our ministries and then coming back um, and serving and doing the same unto, uh, unto the other generation that is to come. And one person in particular I want to highlight with regard to our ministries is Trevor Craner, um, because back in 2013, when Allison and I first got involved uh, with ministry and wanted to uh, serve in, in some capacity as a couple, we actually joined Trevor's team uh, as he was helping out with children's ministry. And so the, the cool thing that I've seen with Trevor is he's, he's actually been in ministry for eight plus years, the better part of eight years. Um, and after doing ch children's ministry, he assisted uh, us with our middle school ministry. And now he's leading the middle school ministry shift with his wife, Emily. And the thing is, some of the kids that Trevor was investing in in children's ministry are now leading alongside him uh, and are part of his team as he leads out the middle school ministry, which is uh, just a, a huge blessing and, and a huge encouragement. And yet again, a great example of just healthy multiplication taking place uh, here at Grace. Um, the, second, the second point that I just want to touch on is uh, an individual named Caleb Toish. And so Caleb and I, we, uh, we did the Seeking God study over the summer. Um, and after doing the Seeking God studies, uh, Caleb fully surrendered his life to the Lord. He got baptized. He repented of his sins, and several weeks later, he asked me if he could buy a couple more Seeking God studies and sent one to his friend who lives in Canada and wanted to do the Seeking God study virtually uh, with his buddy. And just even um, the, that, that, um, the thought of wanting to do unto others what has been done unto him, um, that was not something that I necessarily was explicit about with Caleb, but he... Uh, fully uh, embraced just the multiplication reality and fully understood uh, just his kingdom purpose um, and, and what, is, um, what he is uh, um, responsible to do after having uh, heard the good news of Jesus. And, and just lastly, I, I just want to cover just our missional communities and groups. And, and I could go on about the several ways that we've seen uh, God move and we've seen 
um, these groups flourish and multiply. I can think of the Haydocks missional community. They led a missional community with the Raven's Cross for about five years, targeting new people uh, at Grace. I can think about the Keps, the, uh, the Kohlingers, and the McLaughlins. They had a group together. Now all three of them are, mu are multiplied and leading in various capacities. Um, and later on, you're going to hear about um, my missional community that I was a part of with Brian Menzi and Zach Zeno and our, um, our spouses. But just to highlight one thing from the missional community that I was personally a part of, um, one of the ways that we multiplied out was just seeing Brian Menzi and Shandy go to the north and continue to invest in more and more people that continue to multiply and do the same unto others. Allison and I, we stayed here at the east. We continue to invest in more and more people, and we've seen multiplication take place from that standpoint. And Zach Zeno um, actually found his wife, Emma Zeno. They got married. They then joined up with another couple, Brickell and Sawyer Miller, and now they're leading a missional community, which don't tell them, but they're about ready to multiply because it's a large missional community. They've, they've impacted so many people uh, as a result of, of uh, starting up uh, their missional, commu missional community. And so just to uh, finish up, I'm, I just want to say how excited I am, um, especially here at the East, just seeing all the different vehicles that we have at our disposal by which we can evangelize, we can disciple others, and then we can multiply as healthy things do. So I'm going to hand it over to Mr. Steve Terry, who's going to talk to you a little bit about how they're seeing multiplication happen at the central site. So thanks, Levi. Certainly appreciate just hearing uh, what God is doing to multiply his church. It always reminds me of the passage of scripture over in Acts chapter 2, 42, that said they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching, to fellowship, to breaking of bread, and to prayer. Listen, we're the central site, and we happen to be, I would say, the baby of the bunch. But it's amazing what God is doing. In fact, uh, Paul McConaughey often talks about the wide end of the funnel, the place where many people are coming in. But then from there, we've got to find ways to connect them. So for years, uh, even in our partnership as a pastor of New Life Church of God, we've done more events. And I know we've done a lot of events with Grace Gathering, but we would do more harvest events. And the people would come from the neighborhood, and they still will come. And, and in the event, Events, what I recognized, there were people would come for what we would do for them. They would participate, um, and they would eat the food, and they would go home. We began something called Soccer Thursday. And Soccer Thursday, uh, it, we actually invited our neighbors as friends who are becoming more like family. And this is what I believe. When I, when I think about uh, how God ministered through Ellie McConaughey. She was in church on one Sunday and she began to share just watching how um, our community uh, had so many children and just share that the Lord has given us what she called bags of gold, that we have gold, uh, a gold mine right in our hand happens to be uh, in uh, so many teachers are there at Central, so many people who have engaged with children. Uh, one of those people being Kristen Jones and her husband Adam, and she asked a simple question. And the simple question is, what would it be like if we just spent some time with children? And um, in fact, she had initially just trying to figure out, can we do a week? And then I said, well, why don't we simplify it? She said, well, what about one day? And that one day, uh, we open up Soccer Thursday. Well, guess what happened? At Soccer Thursday, it wasn't just merely the children's ministry, it's everybody in the ministry. When it comes to the wide end of the funnel, Clem and Jenny Bowser, don't you know that Clem has become like the granddad, he shared with me the other day, of many of the children in the community. You'll watch them, they'll show up on on. Thursday, instead of doing something for them, we participate with them. 
Yes, Clem absolutely is awesome playing soccer. And so again, uh, you have him, Dan Brusco, uh, and just absolutely joining in and being a part of the family. Uh, Joe uh, Stillwell, Joe and Cassie uh, being there. And then you have Jenny, um, not only Jenny Bowser, but Tony. And Tony s shared something that really blew my mind. She said, you know, when I grew up, we didn't have, my family wasn't going to church, but thank God for the church bus that would come and bring her to church and love on her. I believe we have the same opportunity. We wanna bring in the people, um, and as we're bringing them in, I believe we can have small groups right at the church. I know it was almost seemed like we have an after, after school club, but what, could you imagine if we brought the children in, we brought you in, we had dinner together, did some homework, and we acted as though we were friends who became more like family. And the Lord adds to his church, multiplies those who are being saved. Well, praise the Lord for what God is doing both at Grace Gathering East and Grace Gathering Central. My name is Brian Menzies, and I just want to share a little bit about some of the multiplication that has taken place with Grace Gathering North. First, I want to share a little bit about our missional communities and family on mission. Uh, then I'll share just a couple leaders that we've sent out to other churches. And lastly, I'll share a couple ways that you can multiply yourself individually. First, as Levi mentioned in his uh, overview of their multiplication and their own experiences, I thought it would be nice to put together a little family tree, uh, if you will. Uh, now this is, I put partial up here because I know this doesn't represent nearly everyone, but when I just started to sketch all this out, I realized how encouraging it is that we are a church who, though we're not perfect examples, we are a living example of multiplication. So here's just a few examples of what this can look like. Here, I'll start with the Booths and the McConaughey's. Several years ago, the Booths and the McConaughey's decided to start a missional community together. In fact, there's lots of incredible stories of how they felt called together, how the McConaughey's started praying for a house, and a house literally next door from the Booths opened up, and the McConaughey's were able to purchase that house and move in right next door. Now, during their time as a missional community, uh, they met every single week. And one thing that they did was they invited in Jeff and Carrie Wyke just to watch and to be trained and discipled how to lead a missional community. Then, over time, the Wykes were then multiplied out from the Booths and McConaughey's, and the Wykes and Orlowski's, uh, they actually lived near each other in Pine Valley, and they started their own missional community, impacting all sorts of neighbors and coworkers and friends for Jesus. Now, these blue arrows represent direct multiplication. So people in the group splitting or people in the group going off. The purple dotted arrows represent influence. So people in a group influencing others. The Booths and McConaughey's, Ellie McConaughey directly discipled the Menzies, our family, and the Francois as Levi shared. And as we met for over uh, three years, we invested in lots of people. We saw some people come to faith. It was incredible. We, we discovered new levels of family. And as we stepped into leadership, as we're stepping into leadership at the North and East, we felt God call the Menzies, us, to move up North and the Fra uh, Francois to move out East. And so we bought houses on other sides of town. But during that time, since COVID, us as the Menzies, we started our, a new missional community at the north side. And then over time, we've been investing in the whole squaws and the Phillips, and they are leading our missional community this year. Of course, Levi talked about the Zenos and the Millers. Uh, Zeno even lived with us for about eight months and spent time with us. And we said, if you want to be a part of our missional community, we're going to train you up so that we can multiply out. Now, a few other things. Grace McConaughey, uh, obviously it was a part of the McConaughey family. Over time, she started different prayer gatherings and ministries. Now, she's a young adult living on her own in a household with a few other women, and they have their own missional community. They invite uh, people onto their front porch, they interact with homeless people, and they have seen people baptized, come to faith. It's incredible. 
Now, the Menzies also during this time invested in Colin Jester along with his parents. They invested in him. During that time, they started this incredible worship gathering at Carroll High School called Enlightened. He invested then in Jake Booth, who was a part of the Booth family as well. And Jake invested in today's youth leaders at the North Site, including a missional community of people who are investing in a basketball team and the families of a basketball team out in Cherubusco. So again, this doesn't represent everything, but it's this incredible picture. You can see it, how people get together with the idea of multiplication. Now, just a few short other thoughts. As a North site, we've multiplied other church leaders over the years. Uh, Phil Johnson was a part of our church community, and then he is now the life care pastor at the chapel. Bailey Sutton, she was actually a part of our church and our missional community, and now she is a part of a church plant called Kingdom Collective in the Y on the southwest side of town. Brian Gehrig and Jen, uh, they were our youth leaders at the North, and now they are youth leaders at First Missionary Church. And of course, Connor and Kristen most recently uh, just moved to Buffalo because they felt called to multiply. So what does it look like for you to invest in others and multiply out? Well, of course, the most natural next thing at the North is we are running an alpha this fall with the Y starting on Tuesday, October 5th. So if you want to multiply yourself individually, I encourage you to be praying about who you can invite to Alpha. And then of course, if you have a small group or a missional community or just people that you get together with, are you considering who you are raising up as leaders? Because as Chris has said time and time again, and Levi and Steve alluded to, healthy things multiply. Well, those are uh, amazing ways. How exciting it is just to hear the stories of what God's doing among us. Let's just pause and let's just take a couple of minutes uh, and do some listening prayer. How has God spoken to you personally? Let's just engage with the Holy Spirit. Allow him to highlight maybe something that in the message or in the passage or what was shared by uh, these three guys. Let's just uh, listen for the Lord and allow him to speak to us. And how are we going to respond? So let's just pause for a few moments and listen. And so, Lord Jesus, thank you so much for the ways in which you're working among us. We are so excited about the future. We're excited about seeing the ways in which you're multiplying disciples in us and around us. You're multiplying groups. You're multiplying congregations. Lord, you are moving in powerful ways, and we're honored that we get to join you in what you're doing. And so I pray that you would lead us by your spirit as we continue to see multiplication in all areas of our lives. And we pray this in Jesus' name, amen.
God bless you, and we'll see you guys next week.